How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine and this is part 1. Cleaning up the old engine parts. I wasn't going to start this because I've got far too much work to do but I'm actually waiting for some parts to arrive for one of the builds and this was just sat on the shelf saying to me please dismantle me, get rid of this horrible paint. So I thought well I'll do that and here's the result. Cellulose thinners wasn't strong enough, I used nitromores in the end. And despite the cellulose thinners and the strong paint stripper, I did need a wire brush to get rid of some of the paint, it was well stuck to the engine. Pretty much like this gasket. I started by using a craft knife, but it didn't remove the gasket. The way that the paint is stuck to this engine, and the way that the gasket isn't coming away, definitely tells me that this engine has been in steam. In this clip I'm removing the next to useless exhaust manifold. I don't quite get this, it's just a very large orifice. The part isn't threaded, so I don't know what the plan was with this engine, how the pipe fitted to it, but what I'm going to do is plug up the hole, then silver solder a piece of phosphor bronze into the large opening and thread this half inch by 32 threads per inch. And that way I will be able to screw in an exhaust pipe fitting. Luckily the manifold gasket scraped off quite easily but I had to remove the other gasket on a piece of sandpaper like this. In the Stuart Victoria steam plant video, when I was cleaning up the port face, I got a lot of comments saying, Oh, you shouldn't use wet or dry sandpaper, all the grit, all the valves, oh, you will destroy this, you'll mess it. And you know, over all the years I've been doing this, I've never destroyed a cylinder or any bearings or any piston rings by doing this, because the minute that you open the steam valve and let steam into the cylinder, it condenses to water and washes away any particles that may be in there. It's time now to have a look at the piston. Originally it was quite difficult to separate the lower cylinder cover from the main casting, but after a few gentle taps with my soft hammer it gave way, and here it is, out of the cylinder. And this is the piston, a bit grimy, but nice and oily, which is what I like to see. All the way through doing this, I'm expecting the worst. This is an old scrap engine that I bought, and from my experience of working on such old engines, usually there are lots of problems, and I end up with the scrap bin quite full. But this is the exception to the rule. Whoever made this in the first place really knew what they were doing. The piston locates on the piston rod on a taper, and believe me, even once the nut was removed, this piston did not part company with this rod easily. And what I had to do was fit the existing nut back onto the thread and this was to prevent any damage during the extraction process. And when I tapped it with the hammer suddenly the taper gave way. From the outset it was difficult, removing the nut was very difficult because I couldn't really hold the crosshead as it's quite sharp. So what I did was I put a bar through the crosshead pin and managed to hold it in one hand and undo the nut with the other. Unfortunately, I do not have a drawing for this engine. Having a drawing to refer to would make it a simpler job, so I didn't know what to expect. I thought at first that the piston rod would have been threaded into the piston, which is very common. So initially I tried to rotate it to no avail. And it was only when I put the nut back on the end and tapped it with the hammer that the two parts separated. This is ordinary sandpaper. It's 120 grit and it's the sort of stuff that painter and decorators use. And I use this because if the work should grab the sandpaper, the sandpaper is going to tear. It's not going to drag me in towards the sharp revolving pieces. A while back someone gave me some emery cloth that was on a woven backing and this was very strong stuff and really good for cleaning up parts. And here's a good tip. Not a tip for industry, just a tip for the home workshop. If you do find yourself in possession of some of this emery cloth, when you're using it, Hold it very lightly between your fingers at each end and make sure that the piece is nice and long, like this piece of sandpaper. And by first using coarse sandpaper to clean it up and then finishing it off with some wet or dry paper, a lot finer, I get a good enough finish for the job. That's looking a lot better. This is perfectly serviceable. Please be aware that I am not making a high speed racing engine or a steam turbine or a gas turbine. I'm making a normal reciprocating steam engine and a low revving reciprocating steam engine at that. And as this part of the engine works within a stuffing gland as it enters the cylinder and the stuffing gland will be packed with graphited yarn 
so it's just not going to be a problem. In this clip, I'm showing how little I've actually removed from this shaft by sanding it in the lathe. There's a little bit of side play, but really not much at all. When I first tried to separate the cylinder from the crosshead, it felt rather tight. But now when I place the crosshead into the crosshead guide, it's not tight at all, so it must just have been gummed up. It's time now to take a quick look at the cylinder to see whether the cylinder needs reboring or sleeving. And it doesn't, it's in perfect condition, really, really good, a finish like glass. The gland assembly on a Stuart 5A follows full size practice, because after all, a 5A is not a model steam engine, it is a small full size steam engine. The adjusting part of the gland just screws into this thread which is on the lower cylinder cover and inside the hole in the bottom cylinder cover you can see the gland packing material. This is called graphited yarn and it's been used for gland packings for many applications over the years. Nowadays people use silicone o-rings but really I still prefer this stuff. Silicone o-rings are okay but when they wear you have to pull them out and mess about and they don't let oil through whereas graphited yarn soaks up the oil so really it's a horrible graphite oily mess, but that's good for the piston rod. The only real problem with graphite yarn is that after a few years it goes hard and brittle and it's time to replace it when it gets like this because it can score the piston rod. So I'll change this as the build progresses. Now it's time to put the lower cylinder cover into the lathe and use some sandpaper to clean it up. And here's another example of why I use cheap sandpaper for doing this sort of a job. It's made out of a stiff sort of paper and the more you fold it, the harder it gets. Like this. It's almost like a multi-toothed lathe tool now. And by doing it this way, I can keep my fingers clear of the rotating piece of work plus the chuck jaws. I could of course skim this with a lathe tool but then the part would get much smaller because it's not bound to be 100% concentric Whereas doing it this way with a piece of sandpaper, and this by the way is 80 grit sandpaper, and I'm now changing to 120 grit sandpaper to get a finer finish. And this clip shows me cleaning the underside of the lower cylinder cover too. And for this part, I'm just using some 120 grit sandpaper. I'm now cleaning up the gunmetal gland, but I'm not using sandpaper for this, I'm using Scotch-Brite. This is like the scouring pads that you use for cleaning pans, but a little bit more abrasive. And in no time at all, the part starts to shine. So this is how the gland arrangement works. The compression piece is put in first, followed by the adjusting ring. And when it's all fully assembled, and the gland has been repacked with graphite yarn, and of course the piston rod is in place, as you tighten the adjusting ring, it presses the compression part of the assembly down onto the graphite yarn, which makes the graphite yarn grip the piston rod. It's very important to make sure that you do not get the gland too tight, otherwise it will actually score the rod. Generally speaking, you tighten the adjuster until it's firm and then back off about an eighth of a turn. I gave the top cylinder cover the same treatment. I didn't show it because it's just a repeat procedure of what you've just seen. And this is quite clean now. And as you can see here, the parts fit together very well. This is the steam chest. I removed the gland fitting and the top cap. And at this stage, this is just as it came off the belt sander. It still needs a little more work, but no more belt sanding. It is hand work from now on, on a piece of sandpaper on the surface plate. So you can now see the potential. I have a kit of parts that are quite nicely machined. And the rest of the castings and parts are now on order from Stuart Models. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching.